Hey guys, welcome to day 21, addictionfree.com. Eric Johnson here. I want to talk to you about something pretty personal that happened that's been kind of haunting me for over 30 years. This is one of my 30 year addictions and last night I came close to fapping. I'm not gonna say the M word on YouTube, but you probably guess what it is. I'm 48 years old and I've had a problem with stopping fapping because it's one of my coping mechanisms. Like all the other addictions I've had, fapping is just one of them. And it's really insidious and it sneaks up on me. And this is what happened that kind of scares me about addiction. So I was laying in bed. Yesterday was January 20th. We all know what happened yesterday. I don't want to get into politics, but you understand what happened. And half of the nation was upset. The other half was pleasantly happy. I fell into the upset category. And I was so stressed out. Not only about that, but just, you know, we're moving in two weeks and there's a lot of changes. And a person like me who has Asperger's, a uh, rapid change is very stressful. And I don't have any coping mechanisms right now. This is my 21st day of not rocking, which is a 40 year addiction. I'm not listening to music, which is another 40 year addiction. And last night I was laying in bed and just, I was half asleep and I felt my hand literally going to the middle of my body. And I had this really excited feeling. And it was almost demonic. You know, and th thoughts started swirling around my head. You know, you should just do it. It will feel really good. It's been so long. You'll have this tremendous release. And my hand just kept going back to that area. I didn't touch it. But... I was really getting excited. And this is how crazy this addiction is. There's been times that just the thought of doing it, of fapping, would make me salivate, literally. And I mean, this is just as bad as, you know, food addiction is fapping. And you know, I read that there's two groups of men. There's men that stop doing it you know when they're 20 and they get married and they start a life they start a marriage you know a family and stuff like that and then the other group they fap until their 60s and i don't want to be the latter group i don't want to do this till i'm 60. i i want to be a good christian i want to be blameless because here's the reason that I think prevents me from eye contact with people is I've never been a hundred percent blameless. I've always had some type of guilt or shame as a result of one of my addictions, AKA coping mechanisms. I've had every type of addiction imaginable. And luckily I grew up in a small town where I couldn't have access to you know, a lot of drugs because I would have been a statistic. I got my hands on some uh, meth, just a little bit of meth one time. And I got so hooked on that so fast. And that's when the fapping was through the roof. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that. And it was demonic. It was truly demonic what I did to myself when I was on meth. And there's two types of people uh, on meth. It's the first type are the people that take apart electronics and look at the wires and, and they're paranoid. They look out the window and they take things apart and they just do really bizarre things. The other group are very sexual. 
and they they go all night and they you know they shaft themselves and they you know they can get really like literally like carpet burns all over your body from you know fapping just really perverse stuff and and meth really tied into like my inner my my childhood i had uh perverted qualities uh, I was always exploring things I shouldn't have as a little boy. And, you know, people say, oh, that's, you know, that's typical, you know. Kids, ex you know, kids are, they explore themselves. That's normal. But I think I took it a little too far, you know, like playing around with my sister's underwear and stuff like that. Just not stuff. And so basically that is an addiction in itself. And all these addictions, you can either feed them and they grow, or you can just stop them and they slowly shrink. And, but then they can be also tricky, like alcohol, you can stop for years. And if you have a relapse, you can um, be, uh, you could get back to that point where you left off within a week or two. You could literally, you know, be sober for five years, and if you relapse, you could literally be drinking the same amount as you did before within a week or two. That's that's my experience. I've heard that story many times in AA, and it's very scary because they say in AA, if you go up, if you go back out there and drink, you might not return to these rooms. You will be dead or in jail or in a mental asylum. And I did see people leave while I was there. I saw people relapse after five years. I saw one lady relapse after 16 years of sobriety. Because the addiction sneaks up and you get that little voice in your head that says, Hey, you know, it's been so long. Might not even, your voice might not even say anything. In fact, she was at a dinner party and just literally physically grabbed some wine that was on the table and just before her voice has even said anything she just grabbed it and drank it and there went 16 years of sobriety so guys it's life or death i don't care if it's sugar addiction food addiction uh fapping fapping could lead to some really evil stuff i can't even mention on here uh you've probably heard about the evil stuff going on underground and basically those are people that are addicted to sex and power and and uh let's just put it this way it's kind of like lolita times a thousand stuff that guys should not be doing and i believe that it's it's just a an addiction that's gone so far that it's gone evil so, I'm not really, so back to the fapping last night, I was desperately looking for relief. I was looking for something to stop feeling the pain. And if I want to heal, heal myself and become a integrated man that I can look people in the eyes and not feel shame and guilt, I need to feel that pain. Because a lot of it is repressed childhood memories. A lot of it is um, just feeling crappy and not wanting to deal with it. And the rocking, the 40 years of stimming, rocking, I, I didn't want to face something inside of myself. And now, doing some work with inner child work, that inner child is finally coming out from 40 years ago, ago coming out now and he wants to feel safe he can't feel safe when I keep fapping and doing stuff because then he hides again because it's not a pretty it's just not a nice thing it's it's not a virtuous thing you know it's 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 dirty it's not something an eight-year-old boy should see so when the adult Eric is thinking about fapping it's really icy right here if he's thinking about fapping, he's got some dirty thoughts going on in his head. 
or some demonic thoughts. Who knows if they're even my thoughts. I mean, it was kind of creepy that my hand was going to a section of my body I didn't want it to do because I do not want to feel guilt and shame anymore. I'm so sick of feeling guilt and shame from my addictions just because I don't feel comfortable in my skin. And I, I'm done with it. I want to be a grown-up I, and I want to be blameless. They say in the Bible, blameless, a lot. You want to be blameless before the Lord. You don't want to go up to, you know, heaven or whatever, to the gates of judgment, and look away because you're so, you feel so much shame. Because there is no running. Everyone's going to have to have that. Everyone's going to have to have that judgment day. So, and the, the voices are like, don't worry about, you know, tomorrow. Just, you know. Just do it today, have fun. It's gonna feel great. Don't worry about tomorrow. You can quit tomorrow. That was the other biggest lie with alcohol. Every single night that I drank, maybe not every night, but most of the time that little voice would say, you know, you can get sober tomorrow. Just go get a, just go get a six pack. And that six pack never, never ever stopped at six. It would always be, you know, second beer run, third beer run, and then it would turn into whiskey, and then it would turn into some weed, and then, you know, if it was around, it would be something even worse, like I said before. So I'm very lucky that I lived in a small town. I couldn't access a lot of that stuff, but I still did plenty of damage with what I had, with just alcohol. You know, heart attack at 32, uh, fired from at least 20 jobs, eight girlfriends, um, lived in a broken down school bus with a mattress that I pissed in every night because I was so drunk I couldn't even walk to the bathroom. Really pathetic stuff. And if I moved to Hollywood when I was 18, if I graduated high school, my parents would have bought me a music scholarship to Hollywood Music Institute of Technology when I was 18. I'm actually glad I didn't graduate when I, I mean, I, I went on to graduate later, two years later, but I'm glad I didn't graduate when I was 18. I would have destroyed myself in Hollywood. I was brand new to addiction and I was having a heyday with it when I, when I was 18. When my dad kicked me out of the house when I was 18, I lived on friends' floors and we just partied. And um, it just got worse. It got worse, it got worse, it got worse until I was 36. And then I was like, I'm done. I'm just done, you know? And so the last few years I've been deleting every single addiction. And I started with the easiest ones and the last two is basically the, whoa, is the fapping and music. I consider that an addiction. I used to get dopamine hits from it, listening to it really, really loud. Music, fapping, and rocking. Uh, fapping is 30 year addiction. Music and rocking are 40 year addictions. So hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Um, and I didn't fap last night, so I'm still in the I'm still in the game, guys. Um, it was just really scary because I could have easily just gone to the bathroom and and finished the job, but I just I just stopped and I started praying again. So if you feel like you're going dark, just pray right away. Just be like, thank you, God, for my life. Thank you for uh, purifying my heart and my conscience and making me a new man. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. And that will really pull you out because it, it could be a downward, a downward demonic spiral. Addictions are, are very uh, sneaky, they're demonic, and it could be something as simple as sugar addiction. People are dying from their addictions every day. The overdose rate is through the roof right now. I feel sorry for people like that. 
uh, if you're if you're battling your addiction, hit that subscribe button. Let's start a dialogue. See if I can help you out, and we'll go from there. Love you guys. God bless.